Coach Eric Bradley here. Some of you guys have seen me on the channels. You follow me. You see me doing the education on the heavy bag teachings, mid training, shadow boxing, conditioning the body for the sport of boxing. And that's what I do. I have many years in the sport. I've worked with heavyweights, I've worked with middleweights, light heavies, bantam weights, some of the names you know. I've worked with guys like Ray Mercer, you know, Larry Donald. Just a lot of guys who have been there, done it, and have taken it to another level. Oliver McCall, and the list goes on and on. I plucked around the country and done many little camps for a lot of top fighters. But one of the things that I want to bring to you today is how we teach the guys in our camps how to use the shoulder roll, the dimensions of the shoulder roll. These things are important that you just don't look and try to get it from anybody because there are a lot of different rules that go and apply for using the shoulder roll. It's not for everyone, just segments. So we're going to go into it and break it down frame by frame. The dimensions of the shoulder roll utilized and taught by Coach Eric Bradley and the ways that I will teach a fighter who's trying to learn it and utilize it in his fight game to elevate his game. Let's go. Round one, the shoulder roll. First and foremost, you got to get the defensive posture of the shoulders. First thing is the back leg. The quadricep has to be strong, so you have to do the proper conditioning. And you can do that by keeping a stance. When you're shadow boxing, there are several exercises that we use to get your legs used to balance. First thing you have to have with that is balance. Hand across the pelvic area, right here above the hips, lower stomach, making sure you're guarding right here against the shot to the kidney, elbow right here to prevent the liver, and then right here inside of the shoulder to protect the jaw and the ear. And you get better as time goes on. So pull, pull, you block here, you block here, you block there. That's a three boom, 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 and up top with the shoulder. And this is what it looks like. Block, 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 boom, pop, pop. Stepping around, pop, pop, pop. Using your footwork. Now, pop, pop. show you how to pop, pop. Use your elbow, which you don't see a lot of guys do, because these are advanced moves. This is not for amateurs. These, this is not the teachings that you should be focusing on when you're getting into the game. Your objective is to learn how to box. So whenever you learn how to box, you got to stick with the basics. And then you get better as you spar, matches come about, and then you get better. But don't rush it, because the shoulder roll can give you a false sense of security and you get caught with straight right hands, left hooks and uppercuts, because you haven't mastered it. So make sure you only use it in phases when you're first learning. It's not a technique that you use all night. So remember, pop, 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 and pop. Boom, boom, pop, pop. Four, and step around, change position. Boom, boom, pop, around. Boom, boom, pop, pop. Body, body, head, head. And step, boom, 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 boom. There are many angles in the rolling shoulder. Round two, who benefits from using the rolling shoulders? So if you're quick minded, it's good for you. But if you're a guy who's slow and thudding, it's a hard thing to digest and process and regurgitate back out. So it's good for you to try other styles. But the rolling shoulder are usually guys who are athletic, quick with mind, and think and adjust and adapt in the moments. Not guys who take it as it is and use it from its base point, meaning you can't adjust doing it. Example, Andre Berto um, against Robert Guerrero. He used it, but in a wrong way. 
He didn't make the adjustment. He didn't adapt to what Robert Guerrero was doing. And the ghost got through and really punished him all night. So you have to be able to adjust and adapt. And that's what the rolling shoulder is for, period, point blank. And now we're gonna get into the punches thrown from the rolling shoulder. All right, next round, we're gonna go and show you how to transfer the rolling shoulder into the earmuffs. Right here, earmuffs, boom. You wanna use earmuffs once the guys start using straight punches and it's harder to roll if he's throwing and setting up feints and trying to pull you out of position and basically tapping and not committing. Because if you want to beat someone using a shoulder roll, just don't commit to your punches. Just touch on like a bag, pop, pop, like a, a double end bag. Pop, 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 pop. And it causes them to overcommit to the shoulder roll. So once you get to that position, what you want to do as a pugilist is to sit down on yourself and you want to transfer that defense, boom, from the shoulder roll. And now there are different and advanced levels of the earmuffs. But if you throw the earmuffs in there too soon, what can happen is you can get caught behind the ears. So what you want to do is coming out of there, pop, roll, stepping around, boom, and brace. Brace, brace, walk, walk them down, pop, block here, go right back, boom, boom, make sure that you are tight, pop, and your head's moving, boom, back into the shoulder roll, getting back into fighting at angles. Because if you take these things and you don't put them together correctly, you'll find yourself eating shots that are unnecessary to take. And that's what you don't want to do in the sport. Trust me. So remember, pop, pop, step around, pop, and you're back blocking those shots. Pop, 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 pop. And now we're going to get into how to walk your opponent down, walking them down, walking them back into the dungeon, the trenches. These are important things to carry with you in your back sack. round it's round four how do you walk the guy back how do you keep a guy off of you whenever you're using the rolling shoulder and you want to breathe your objective is to walk him back so if you're tight in your defense you dress down in it walk him down back here here walk him here here for the hooks ha, ha, ha. break him down Walk to him. Hands here, here, walk. Ha. Gotta use your angles. Wow. Ha. So when you're walking, your body, wah. you're going here, wah. you're walking down, wah. eating the shots, taking them down, rolling shoulders here, wah. body, wah. head, wah. up top, wah. under the elbow, wah. walk them back. Ha. 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 Learning how to use his body weight against him. And then you start to see that onslaught. You throwing those hooks back, you walk them down and stay controlled. guy retreating and walking them back, slowly punishing them, touching them to the body, touching them to the head. These are key points to elevate your rolling shoulder to another level. That's why guys like Floyd Mayweather are undefeated. Round five. Round five here, or six, what we're going to do now is show you how to look from behind that shoulder. You walk in the guys against your opponent. You're blocking those hooks. And you're keeping that eye directly down that line.
in the middle of the ring, boom, on the ropes. When you're leaning on the ropes, your objective is to not lean straight back, but keep yourself at an angle. So the angle is here, and tilt. You're using this right leg, and you're staying on the ball. You're leaning back, and you're peeping directly over that shoulder. As the punches come, you still keep your eye on the opponent. That gives you the opportunity to throw that pop. You can see when he's overcommitted, pop, 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 pop. Now your reflexes have to be pinpoint. Anyone can do this style. I wouldn't be asking guys who are not of the brand. Even Arturo Gatti adapted some of these qualities and could use it and add it to his arsenal, but there's just some type fighters. Ruslan Provolnikov is not a guy that's going to use the rolling shoulder. You know what I'm saying? It's just certain minds that can do this and accurately walk and use it and perform and adjust and adapt in the moment with the rolling shoulder. The next thing we're going to go into is teaching you how to bend. And bending eliminates visibility from your opponent, meaning your body vanishes and you're not there anymore. James Tony was the king of doing this, and Floyd has adopted this. You notice one thing that these guys have in common is they're both Midwestern. Those guys are taught well. But like I said, there are millions of people that get taught this. There are only several that can execute it in all circumstances. So we're gonna walk forward. Your people behind the shoulder. And you, bah, it takes courage. Bah, 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 pop, boom. And when you bend, bah, bah, you can step around. You can get up under the hook. Step, coming around once again. Pop here, you hear? Bend. Pop, step that. Bah, bah, and you put a triple move together. And these are pugilist combinations. This is calculus in boxing. Whenever you get this stuff down and you can perform it in the ring or on the big stage, holler at me because you become a pugilist in the sport of boxing. Let's wrap this thing up. You can find us at www.fitnesslifebyericbradley.com. And that's where I'll be hiding. So make sure you look us up. Go and check out some of those hot ones. The conditioning, the skill set. Take it up under your umbrella and make it yours. Thanks again for watching. So long.